Welcome, everyone, to the Knoxville Monty event to end our school year. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm about to introduce everything, but before I do, I will let Father David and Jessica pray. Let's stand, please. Christ is risen from the dead, Jacqueline Gaudel, by death and upon us, the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death, by death, all those of the Jews bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death, by death, all those of the Jews bestowing life. O Lord Jesus Christ, we ask the blessing of your presence and by the grace of your all Holy Spirit upon this gathering, these proceedings, and this celebration of another year of study completed. May all that is said and done be to your glory and for our edification life-giving and merciful trinity receive our thanksgiving for all your goodness make us worthy of your blessings so that when we have brought to fruit the talents you've entrusted to us we may enter into the joy of our lord forever exalting the shout of victory alleluia for to you are due all glory honor and worship to the father to the son and to the holy spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages amen, amen. Thank you, Father David. <clears throat> All right. So, to begin with, defining our terms, this is this event is called Nox Palmani. For those who don't know, that means in Latin, Knights of Palms. And palms are a signal, uh, what is it, symbol of victory. So, what do we mean then by uh, Knight of Palms? We mean that this is, we are signifying the victories that the students have had over their studies that they've arduously endured for 10 months now, and the triumph that they have succeeded with. Um, we, to celebrate this event, we have two kinds of things. Um, one of them is various performances that the students will be putting on, and the other is the ceremony itself. For the program this evening, um, we will begin with recitations from the kindergarten and sec second grade class first, followed by the third and fifth graders. Um, and then the third graders and up will do their choir performance. After that, we will have a ceremony where myself and various faculty will be graduating the students. Uh, then we will have an intermission. After the intermission, we will have a production that the students have put on a production of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, which I hope you will all enjoy. Um, so yeah, with that, uh, that is Dr. Paul Mahdi this year. I hope you all enjoy. Um, and with that, Mentor McDonald, can you begin by bringing your students up for recitations? Give him my heart. Yeah, 
teacher. And we love to do poetry throughout the year, so here is a sampling. And please don't applaud until the fourth poem.
One of them is the one that you had noticed um, Christ is risen, that Father David was speaking in from here, and we're going to sing that song as well. And when we sing that song, we're going to actually sing it five times. It's a very short song. On the fifth time, on the fourth time, they're going to do what the Southern Orthodox Church do, and they stamp their feet when it says stamp their feet. So they're going to do that, and then we're going to ask you to do it. You can sit and stamp, or you can stand and stamp if, if you would like to. If you don't want to, that's fine. But you should get the gist of it. Also, just so you know this, the, um, the words in it are in the little your pamphlet there. You'll see that there, so you can just sing along with it right there. Okay. The first one we're going to be doing is preparatory contact for nativity. And what this is, is a song of the Virgin Mary coming to the cave to give birth to Jesus, who is from eternity, and then it ends, God. That's who he is. So we're going to do that one first. I'll, I'll just tell you what they all are at first, and then I won't interrupt it. The next thing we're going to do is an Irish one. It's called Que Mille Balcheron, Aisa. And what that means, that that first front part, Que Mille Balcheron, Aisa, Aisa. That means a hundred, they're, I'm Irish, or at least I have Irish descent. They're always overdoing things. So when they, something is really great, they say something like this, a hundred thousand welcomes to you, Jesus. That's what they were talking about, Jesus. To you, Jesus. So that's the, the, what that means. Right there. <clears throat> then after that, we're going to have Ubi Karika. And that's a very difficult song. Our choir had a very hard time getting this down. Because in this particular time, as they sing, the sopranos are going to be singing one line. Well, the altos and lower are going to be singing a, a different line at different times, and then together they get together, and then bang! It's like they're chi they're they're talking on both sides of their mouth, I guess, or something. Different ideas coming through, and once again, it's in the language. Um, it's from about around. It came in around the fourth <coughs> century. They start seeing the idea of that happening when Christianity was spreading across the Roman Empire, and that's what we're going to. Um, go on. And then the last one will be Christ is Ready, which you'll all help us if you can. Okay.
you to sing along with us. Don't forget it's right there. The fifth time. You can sing along if you want with the others, but the fifth time is when we really need you. So, grammar, dialectic, and rhetoric. These also correspond to stages of development. So, the grammar stage corresponds roughly to uh, kindergarten to si sixth grade, and that's where the emphasis is more on recitation, on absorb absorbing a huge amount of information, and then being able to recite, uh, as you saw earlier, um, the, different, uh, the different things that they've learned. Then, for the dialectic stage, roughly corresponds to the seventh through ninth grade. And for that stage, uh, the emphasis is on argumentation. They've, they've absorbed so much in the grammar stage that now they're ready to really uh, find differences and a greater unity through argumentation and try to find um, uh, the, the logos of the arguments. And then <clears throat> after that, having synthesized it, having learned how to make arguments uh, they learn how to make it more and less effectively. They learn that there are ways of expressing it more or less powerfully. So for that, the rhetoric stage from 10th to 12th grade, that's the stage for um, rhetoric and expression. 
So with that in mind, um, uh, I will then go through each levels, each form, excuse me, and level, and uh, proceed to officially announce their graduation in front of everyone. So we'll begin with uh, Toby, kindergartner, please stand. John and Natalie, first graders, please stand. You are in what's called the primary grammar stage. This one we do divide so that kindergarten through second grade is the primary form. <coughs> and for this, you've begun your journeys in education in, with an emphasis on phonics and mathematics, but then absorbing tons of other information, uh, science, uh, music, poetry, you name it. Uh, and you've done this successfully, Deshifli. Well done. You have. Uh, you have graduated your level and will advance further in your form. All right. <laughs> Next, we'll, uh, we'll have the secondary grammar stage for uh, Stan. So let's see here. Uh, Gideon and Sadell, third graders. Um, Kate and Jagger, fourth graders, can stand. Brennan and Wade, fifth graders. And then also Daniel and Nehemiah, the sixth graders, can stand. All right, and so what you began with the primary grammar stage, you, you continued on with the secondary grammar stage, learning more and more, observing, absorbing more and more, also observing. Um, and I've been proud to see, to see your developments over the course of the year. Um, for third through fifth graders, you, will, uh, you have graduated and you will continue on with your form. But then Daniel and Nehemiah, as sixth graders, you've completed all of the secondary uh, grammar and may move on to dialectic. Congratulations. Okay, then now we move on to the dialectic stage. Uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. So seventh grade, Isaiah and Veronica can stand. Eighth grade, Addie. Ninth grade, Brayden. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have done a very wonderful job uh, in argumentation, uh, and I say that without any facetiousness, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> you, you may continue on with it, or rather, eighth and ninth grade, you will continue on, and I, I look forward to seeing your progress in the dialectic levels. But then, uh, Brayden, as a ninth grader, you have graduated the form and may move on to rhetoric. Congratulations, all. Rhetoric form, Serafima, please stand. You're an 11th grader. You will now actually have a companion in rhetoric next year, but well done, uh, being a great example for the rhetoric form as well as to your fellow students. Congratulations, Serafima. <laughs> All right, uh, with that in mind, uh, I, as the headmaster, has graduated you, but we will also have, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, your primary teachers acknowledge you on a more personal level with what you've uh, accomplished this, uh, this year. So we'll begin with the youngest kindergarten teacher, uh, Master Howard, and then go on to uh, Master James after that, Master Beecham, Master Ellet, and then finish with Master Staley and Sarah. So with that, Master Howard, can you begin? I teach kindergarten and we read so many, many, many beautiful books. So I took that as inspiration for the award that I am giving to Toby tonight. Toby, I present to you the award, the Frederick Award, for your in recognition for your creativity, imagination, and love of the arts. <laughs> Example 
that uh, persuaded Saint Basil to turn from his pursuit of uh, worldly glory to the service of God. So it's my pleasure to present this award to Natalie McGuire in recognition of her academic achievements, kindness, and restless or relentless leadership in directing and helping her peers <laughs> in performing her task. <laughs> So um, she's not here right now for this phase, 
Uh, but God willing, he'll be here later. Um, but in his place, I'll be giving out his, uh, the poems to the students. Uh, in, in an odd way, this is actually uh, a good coincidence in a sense, because <clears throat> um, uh, through an unfortunate uh, turn of fortune, Patrick Ella was sick uh, a few times this year, and so I had to sub for him in this particular class, the middle school class. So I actually got to know them more intimately than any other class. So I can actually speak from experience on, on all these students. And um, because I'm a headmaster, uh, these, this will simultaneously, uh, what is it, um, say their virtue, but it would also say, in my opinion, things that they can work on and orient themselves to be even more, um, even more perfect. Because, as our Lord said, he commanded us to be perfect, and since we're not our Lord yet, we're growing into him more and more. Um, I just, it seemed appropriate on this occasion. So, I'll start then by um, uh, uh, calling on Wade in a moment to, to come up. So, he is actually a fifth grader, but we had him join the middle school because when we evaluated him uh, before the school year, we were quite impressed by um, what he was able to accomplish and felt like even though it would be a challenge uh, He would be able to take it on and in fact he did uh, And we were very proud of him um, on top of that. I'll just say that um, I had a, a number of great discussions with this class the Humane Letters class of Christian Studies, which is the class where we um, Have discussions on matters of philosophy and theology and you know simple stuff like that um, and I have to say, he was the quietest, quietest one in the room, but whenever I called on him, he had the most thoughtful responses. So well done on that way. If there was one thing I would commend you to do, even better is speak more, so that you can share your riches with others. So, Wade, your poem. All right, uh, next I will talk about Daniel Andre. So, those who, uh, I don't even know if his parents know the extent to which he is just a very witty fellow. <laughs> just any, I, 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 every single day, it seems like he, was, he would turn a phrase. And in fact, actually, later on he'll play Benedict in our play, who is known for his wits. And in fact, I think that was well casting. He was somewhat, um, he does that anyway. Um, he'll just play himself on stage. So, um, and with, any, with it, anyone with such great wit, Daniel, I have to say it was a pleasure to be in class with you at all times. But with any wit, too, it is good to moderate yourself and learn how to be serious as well as witty. Or, you know, to the extent you can do both, do both. So, that would be my commendation in your poll. Next one is Nehemiah. So uh, whenever I think of Nehemiah in this context, I'll say that he was one of those students, and we have some, that was struggling with a particular subject over, in this case, the course of the year. Um, it didn't, uh, it wasn't, you know, we, we, we tried many things to help, to help him. He tried many things to help as well. Uh, it didn't seem to succeed until this very last final um, where he did the exam. He, we, 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 got the formula right, he and, he and I, uh, as well as his students, and I really saw him apply himself in a very new way, and it was very satisfying that by a slim margin, he got the best grade in the class. Well, in fact, for that example. So, well done, Yamaya. Come up and do your job. This next one is Veronica Bennett. And I have to say that in some ways she, she kind of is like Nehemiah. There was one subject where she continued to struggle throughout the year. And um, I, just, I, I have to share this. She, she, has a, she, has, you know, she has an older brother called Darren. And there was a, there was a term called Darrenitis thrown around. <laughs> we, we, we don't have an official diagnosis yet, but you know, we're working on it. <coughs> but uh, nonetheless, I was very, I, I was very uh, proud that again this week she was able to get the highest grades she's achieved in that class on the final exam. So to her, I would say that uh, do not despair. 
and keep at it for your studies in the future. And may you be blessed, and may Darenitis never come to your to your. <laughs> So this next one is Isaiah, and when I think of Isaiah, I, um, I'm reminded of a discussion we had in Christian studies recently. Um, for those who don't know about Eastern Orthodoxy or this quote, there's a very famous quote uh, about that kind of summarizes the nature of all archaeology and anthropology. Um, God became man so that man may become God. Uh, and that's a beautiful sentiment. And there's actually a lot of things that have to fall into place to make that logical, to make that really coherent proposition. Um, so when I was discussing in a Christian studies dubbing for Magic Pellet, I had to break it down how the ecumenical councils, especially the first one, had to, um, had to go about arguing to make sense of this. And I was quite shocked by how well Isaiah was able to just quickly grasp the logic of what was happening. So, uh, God bless you for that, Isaiah. That was your pinnacle in the class in terms of logic. I commend you to have that same sort of logic in every discussion so that you can enrich the discussion with that. So. All right, I have two more. So, brothers and sisters, actually. So, this next one is Addy, or Adler. <laughs> All right, so uh, for this, um, Addy, you know, the praises could, could go on quite a lot because you are a student who, uh, who is responsible for yourself and also for others. And so very proud of you, very thankful for you in many, many contexts, uh, and may your, your classmates learn from you in every way. Um, if I were to commend, commend you to do one other thing, though, Addy, is uh, challenge yourself. Because you have these native gifts of reading and writing, especially, uh, and you shouldn't just waste it. So, to the extent that you have any opportunity to do so, read and write more um, challenging works so that you may enrich yourself and others by it. Okay, so this last one is Braden. Um, in thinking about Braden, uh, I put him as a house leader this year, and it was one of those where I had an intuition that it would be a good thing for him, and it turned out to be very, very true. He rose to the occasion very early on. Now, he, this is a situation, too, though, where uh, he was not perfect. Uh, no one is, but there were things he had to learn that he had to repent of, in fact, in order to be a good leader. But one of the things that I saw the year before was that he was capable of deep repentance. And so he continued on that streak this year. So, Brayden, I have to say that that is, uh, you have a sense of conscience that when you make a mistake, you own up to that fact, and then you repent, and we never have to have a discussion again. So may you have that in all your, uh, all your spheres of influence. I only saw you primarily in, uh, you know, leading, uh, leading the students in the houses during lunch and some things. May you do that in all aspects of your life, including the classroom. So, with that, we have <laughs> All right, with that, I have, uh, I no longer measure Ellen, I measure Walt again, and may measure Sally, give the last poem to Sarah Peter. I would like to be able to just talk like that without but now my wife said, no, you're going to write, write it down so we, we don't have to stay here until midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would be doing it. So it is with great pride and admiration that I stand before you to present this award to a student who continually demonstrates grace, maturity, wisdom, inspiration, a good work ethic, and discernment. This award is named after... Athena, a figure from Greek myth mythology who embodies truth, goodness, beauty, and scholarly excellence. Seraphima Hay, stay there. <laughs> I have some things to talk about. <laughs> Seraphima Hay has been a part of our school family since her first steps into the hall our halls 
as a wide-eyed first grader. Over those 11 years, I've had the privilege of watching her develop gradually, not just as a student, but as a person of remarkable character and resilience. As often happens with us humans, Serafima went through some growing pains, I would say, uh, during her dialectic years and earlier. But by continually seeking after and desiring to be more Christ-like, as she grew and matured, Serafima has emerged not only as a diligent scholar, but also as a mature and discerning young woman. Serafima's journey is a testament to the power of resilience and the transformative potential of classical education in partnership with her Orthodox faith, Orthodox Christian faith. Her dedication to her studies, coupled with her unwavering spirit and faithfulness to God, serves as an inspiration to us all. It's not a whole lot of mistake. As I prepare to bid farewell to my role as a teacher at HSCA, it brings me immense joy to know that Serafina will be returning next year to embark on her final senior year. I have no doubt that she will continue to shine brightly, leaving an indelible mark of all those around her. Serafina, will you please come up now? Thank you. Please accept this award as a token of our admiration and appreciation for your outstanding scholarship and your exemplary character. May it serve as a reminder of the incredible journey you're on, you've undertaken and the boundless potential that lies ahead. Congratulations, Sarah Kingsley. Your school committee is immensely proud of you. And before you go, I'm going to read what's on yours. In recognition of your demonstration of grace, maturity, growing wisdom, inspiration, a good work ethic, and discernment, your dedication to your studies, coupled with your unwavering spirit and faithfulness to God, serves as an inspiration to us all. <laughs> have concluded the first half of Knox Palmani. Um, I will designate, just point out a couple things to do while we have internet finish it for the next 20 minutes. Uh, so we have uh, art over there that you could observe, that's the students. Uh, we have food in the back and beverages. Uh, there is a gift shop over there and there, uh, our parish also has a bookstore, Orthodox Books is excellent. So, um, and of course you may fellowship as well. May you have a wonderful intermission. See you in 20 minutes.